Yo, what's up, YouTube? Welcome in to the live show. Second night in a row. We did a special live yesterday with our friends over Flipping Hippos. If you missed it, go check it out. In the meantime, good evening. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, questions, comments, concerns over in the uh, chat over there uh, belongs to Adam and Star from Flipping Hippos, previously mentioned. They have the blue wrenches. They are your admins. If you need anything, please help them. Ask them questions and get links from them. Okay, let's talk about it. Full-time. How many people in my chat are full-time sellers already or almost full-time sellers? Good evening, Top Notch Flips. Alexis, and welcome into everybody else that I can now see. Treasure Hustlers, thank you for joining me. It's been a while. I know you are busy out west, so thank you for spending time. A lot of you out in the west. Who's on the east coast? Who's on the midwest? And who's on the west coast? What time is it where you are and where are you? It's 9 p.m. Eastern on the east coast. That's when we do this every east coast and i was almost late because if you guys didn't hear i bought a drone i was trying to learn how to fly it uh it's not easy um i bought the smallest drone you could buy but it has a fantastic camera anyways i'll get you guys some camera footage from the drone uh asap uh, i'm not going to start it on stream because i'm pretty sure i'll take it through the roof okay uh, watching the chat watching the chat let's see what we have PA, California, Illinois, Midwest, lots of you in the Midwest. And we got a Renob KCID is a full-time seller. Lots of you would be full-time. The reason I want to talk about all of you that are full-time versus not full-time is because I think it is more important than ever right now uh, to not rely on a job. It's the American way to work and uh, get a job and work for somebody and get a paycheck I just think it is too unpredictable and dangerous right now. We have an election coming up that is the most decisive election in the history of this country. Prove me wrong. Uh, I've never seen this country in the shape that it is. The unemployment, the bills, the deferments, the crippling, the stock market, everything is just in shambles. And I'm not one to be negative on this channel, uh, but I'm being negative right now because I don't like the outcome. And the best way to beat negativity is positivity. And for business, positivity is working for yourself. Stop relying on other people. I have never had a full-time job in my adult years. Yeah, as a teenager, I worked. You guys probably know I, I worked at Chili's. I worked for my dad. Uh, I did some jobs for the company that he ran. Um, so yeah, I've had jobs. Of course, I've had jobs, but not since I've been. I've lived in, in Florida since I was 20, almost 21. Uh, I've never had a job. Never. So not in my adult years. Uh, it, it's not the time to have one, I got to be honest with you. Uh, full-time with a full-time job. There's several of you that are. Uh, America is drowning physically and mentally. Um, Apple stock, yeah. And it's a scary time in history. And this, if you're ever going to do it, and let me give you guys that, you know, we come on here and put out videos with advice and all this stuff all the time. And getting your own business going is a piece of advice. But let me give you the biggest piece of advice on top of the advice about being somebody that works for yourself. Write this down, take a screenshot, take a video, take whatever you have to do to save this. Being an entrepreneur is not a five day a week job. You've probably seen the meme or the inspirational quote people throw up all over the internet. I'd rather work 80 hours a week for myself than 40 hours a week for someone else. You've probably also seen the one that says, thanks for all your hard work, uh, blah, blah, blah. If you work this hard again next year, uh, this is a Lamborghini and I can get another one or whatever it is, a mansion or a Ferrari. It's all true. You're working for somebody else because they found a way to make money more than they can pay you and have you do the job for them. Work for yourself, people. Please do the job yourself. It's not that hard. Work on the weekends. Any of you actually think I work 80 hours a week? Somebody put your hand up. Do you guys realize that's like, what, 11 hours, 11 and a half hours a day? There are days, don't get me wrong. There are days I definitely work 12 and 14 hours. But does anybody think I work 80 hours a week? Fair fair question, right? Fair question in the chat. Does anybody think I work 80 hours a week? Just a question, just wondering. Um, Randy's been working for himself for 45 years, right? So here's my advice to you. If you have a job, if you work for somebody else every single day. Yeah. So this was a trick question. Top notch flips just hit it. I actually work more than 80 hours a week. There are days I work 12 and 14 hours, no doubt about it. Days I've worked like 16 hours and only slept. Um, work way more than 80 hours, way more is a trick question. Okay. If you have a job 
and you're putting in 40 hours a week at a job and you have kids and you have soccer practice, which most of you probably don't have right now because does soccer exist? Uh, does football exist? Oh, on a side note, look what I picked up today, you guys. Look what I picked up. Oh, in case you don't know what that is, somebody explain it to him in the chat. Why is that important? Um, nothing insensitive, just the fact that I picked it up. If you have kids and soccer practice and jobs and bills, you have got to find a way to push yourself to work at reselling or social media or your own business. You have to kill yourself now. Kill yourself. If you're older, if you're in your 50s or 60s or 70s, I'm going to catch some backlash for this because you guys are going to say you're older and maybe you don't want to work that hard. Some of you do. Great. Kill yourself. Get to a position where you don't need that job anymore. You have to. This country is in a bad, bad way. And I can't imagine either way this election goes. that It's going to get any better anytime soon, right? Any time soon. Is it going to get, does anyone think that this election is going to change anything in this country? Does anybody think that? Flipping goodies, Mike is in his 50s. Mike is definitely up there. The Washington NFL football team to be renamed later. Correct. Um, if you're not building your own business, you're building someone else's. Right. I'm not telling you to work on your reselling while you're supposed to be at your job helping customers because that's not right. You can't do that to somebody. But you've got to build it yourself. I'm in my mid-30s now and I'm starting to not be that 25, 26, 27-year-old. I used to love to go out to bars and clubs, not clubs, but like, you know, bar and grill and late nights. And thank God for COVID because it kind of made me not be able to. But at the same time, I'm glad because I didn't like spending. That's a hundred bucks, 125 bucks. Every time you go out, you know, there's two of us. So we go out and we, we order food and dinners, 30, 40, 50 bucks. And we order two rounds of drinks maybe, or, or maybe I'm drinking and she's not. So I drink four drinks. Those are eight and 10 bucks a piece. Even $5 beers, you're talking about 20, 25 bucks in drinks. You're tipping the bartender, you're tipping your waiter. You're spending 100, 125 bucks twice a month. I mean, we were doing it every other weekend. Um, and you guys know, you saw it. So hunker down, save your money, invest your money, put that money back in and start working for yourself. Stop working for other people. This country is not made to help you. This country, those politicians, I don't care who you vote for, take that stuff somewhere else, but they're not here to help you. They're here to help themselves. Nobody's going to do this for you, right? Nobody's going to work. Even I, as much as I can help you or provide videos or training or coaching or, or guides like we put out last night that are linked below, <laughs> shameless plug, um, that's only going to go so far. It's only going to do so much for you if you don't do it for yourself. So um, welcome into everybody who just joined. Good evening. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, and, and the feeling, uh, you know, the feeling of working for yourself, Joe uh, just put it out there that it feels so much better when you make the money for yourself and not for somebody else, because it is a great feeling to make a sale for 50 bucks or hundred bucks that you paid $5 for. It is a scary time in history. Okay. Uh, that's my little, um, speech about, uh, why you should work for yourself. Now that we've established the who that's you and the why that's working for yourself, or the what and the why all at once, what working for yourself, why, because this country is jacked. Um, how, the how, let's talk about the how. Um, you Most jobs will walk all over you, your dead body to get a replacement, no doubt about it. Let's talk about the how, let's talk about everyone in this chat, and I don't want you to share your financial information, but I would bet that a majority of this chat, feel free to chime in if you want, a majority of this chat could live off of $4,000 in profit per month. That's a $50,000 a year business. And I'm talking about profit. I'm not talking about you sold 50 grand and you only made a thousand bucks a month and um, you only profited 12,000. No one's living off of that. Profit of $4,000 a month, four grand a month, right? I'm pretty sure everybody in this chat could live off of $4,000 a month in profit. Now that's pre-tax, but if you make a salary of $50,000 at your job, that's pre-tax too, right? Pre-tax. Divided by 365 days. So we're doing that 50 grand and we're doing it by 365. It's only $137 a day, you guys. Look, I'll turn the camera around. You want to make that $50,000 pre-tax income and you want to divide it, divide it by 365 days because we're entrepreneurs. We get to work every day, right? It's only $137 a 
a day, $137 a day in profit. That's all you got to figure out how to make. You guys buy and sell shirts that you make $20 and $30 on and buy it. You put it up, you list it, you sell it. You can't come up with $137 a day between three platforms, four platforms, a YouTube channel, Instagram, affiliates, everything that I've taught you guys by now. Come on, guys, $137 a day. If you're working 10 hours a day, that's only $13.70 an hour. $13.70 an hour is what you're valuing yourself at. You should be worth $20, $30, $40, $50 an hour. Just giving you guys the number. Um, so when do I start work? Oh, my mom's in the chat. Mom, what are you doing here? Um, <laughs> barely got two kids. 137 a day is not enough. And you know what? $137 a day is probably not enough because again, that's our $4,000, $4,100 a month. I don't know. What is that? 137 times 30 is $4,100 a month pre-tax. That's hard to live on if you're single. Cause look, after tax, you're going to be left with what? Like 3,500 after deductions and all 3,400, 3,300. You got to try to pay a $1,500 rent or mortgage payment. You got to pay $1,500 worth of gas and groceries and all that other stuff. You got to pay $1,500 worth of electric bill and cell phones and internet and cable and water bill and, and trash and all that stuff. So yeah, I would really say you need to make more, but I think most people could do it on $50,000 a month. Am I wrong? Am I, is that two? Charlotte says she could live off two grand a month. Um, Ryan Mack has eight kids. He couldn't, he couldn't. There eight kids, is a lot, a lot of kids. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, you know, f I think four grand, $200 on diapers alone. Minimum wage is Arizona is $12. Me putting you guys at 4,000 a month. So if somebody's working a full-time job in Arizona, I think minimum wage is $12, 11 or $12 pretty much in every state. I think it's like 11 something here in Florida. I guess somebody can look that up. Um, that means you're going to make only two grand a month. Minimum wage is like two grand a month. It's probably a little more than that. Uh, I think minimum wage is what, like 20, is it in this federal minimum, minimum wage? What is, what is federal minimum wage? Is it like 28,000? Federal minimum wage in 2020 is, it just depends. It looks like it's, you know, in Florida, it's only 856. Oh my God. Wow. Florida is only $8.56. Um, assuming that you work 52 weeks times 40 hours times uh, let's just say $10. Yeah. Federal minimum wage is going to put you somewhere in the 20 to $25,000 range. Um, but I think four to 5,000 is where most people would need to be three kids in Philadelphia, more than four grand. Social security tax alone is 12,000 target is like 15. Yeah. So most places are Florida is still only less than $9 an hour. That's crazy. I I'm putting your number at 1370 an hour. You know, that's better than minimum wage in most states. It's under minimum wage in the expensive states. Obviously, California. If you live in New York, New Jersey, California, uh, I know Texas has gone up in price. I know, you know, obviously out west is expensive. Um, but we could move that number from four to 5,000 or five to 6,000. I know almost everyone in the chat could live off of 6,000 a month. I know that because for a long time, I lived off of six and 7,000 a month. No doubt about it. And I had stupid bills. I had stupid spending too. Um so that was part of my issue there. Uh, Arkansas still seven twenty five, seven twenty five, two thousand dollars a month in Taxachusetts. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, when I worked my job, it was for seven fifty an hour plus tips, and I was thrilled. That was two thousand two, two thousand three. So you're talking about eighteen years ago. I made seven dollars and fifty cents an hour. Um. So yeah. So somebody Tanya worked. Davidson worked for three fifteen an hour. So here's where I want to wrap this all in a circle here. I think most of you are capable, remember, of earning your own minimum wage income at home. So we just determined that minimum wage is ranging somewhere between like the low eight, nine dollars up to like fifteen dollars, which puts the average minimum wage in this country around twelve or thirteen bucks. I put you earning thirteen seventy, call it fourteen dollars an hour, working from home to make enough to live on. Some of you might require a $15, $16 an hour because you live in a more expensive state. So obviously your state equates to a higher minimum wage, higher income to live at home. Can you, can you earn for yourself minimum wage at home without working for somebody else? Because remember, you get to take away all of those deductions and expenses and get your taxes down so you'll be able to cover those taxes. And if you're already capable of making some amount of money while you work your job, how much can you make full-time 
on your own, flipping daddy, here's minimum wage. This is actually more than minimum wage in my state. So just in case anybody was wondering, um, thank you, Flippin' Daddy, for the 999 uh, super chat. I do appreciate that. Um, uh, more important question, did they get rid of the guests at the pond? No. Uh, nobody talked to me about the new house purchase. It has gone downhill in a hurry. Uh, I probably am still moving in, but uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not been going well. Let's just leave it at that. Um, good night, mom. I just saw you were leaving. I'll talk to you later. Can you make fourteen dollars an hour on your own? How many people here think that they could earn minimum wage on their own at home if they didn't? Let's say I offer to pay your bills for three months. I'm like, your bills are paid for the next ninety days or or one hundred and twenty days, four months, whatever it is. And you could just focus for four months. Could you get yourself to fourteen or fifteen dollars an hour, four or five thousand dollars a month profit, not sales profit, within a ninety day t- time frame, within a hundred and twenty day time frame? Can you do that on your own? How many people think that they could do it without the stress of having to get up and go to work every day? Thank you, Flea Mark Hunter. Appreciate it. Good night. Come out here to Riverview with us, Greg Lowry. <laughs> I live just five minutes from Riverview. Um, whenever all the crap is over, I'll have a meetup. If you did not have to go to work, if you did not, my chat on StreamYard, by the way, is somewhat slow. So excuse me if we are delayed. I, I, maybe I might be delayed. Anyone can, honestly. Anyone can. Uh, Ascarda is it Ascarda? Ascarda works part time and don't work at it as much as you should and profits three thousand dollars a month. Midwest Picker would need two employees. See, employees become expensive, even at four hundred bucks a week. That's eight hundred for two employees. That is like thirty. What did I just say? Eight hundred for two employees a week. Thirty two hundred dollars a month. It's a lot. It is a lot. I don't believe that $4,000 a month is just above poverty lane, treasure box land. I think if you're making, your poverty line is probably, people tightening their bootstraps could live off of $2,500 a month. If they had like an $800 rent and a paid off car or like a $200 car payment, thousand bucks, they're living on $1,000 in gas and groceries and, and internet. It could be done on $2,500 a month. I'm not gonna say it's it's it would be easy. It would be a tough life to, to try to make it on $2,500 a month. Uh, I don't believe that $3,000 or $3,500 would make life easier, but it would make life a little less stressful. I think somebody making $30,000 a year, either as a single person or maybe a single parent, could do it. Uh, as a couple, no, probably tougher if an entire family's income is 30 grand with kids and all that. If you're up to 40 or 45,000, which is just under what we're talking about, I think it's totally easily doable. I lived off of 40 and 50 grand when I moved into my apartment and, uh, you know, Kate was working at the time we had just got together. We were, uh, you know, together a little while and then, um, we moved in and, um, and I, uh, I, probably made about 50,000. I was probably making about four to $5,000 a month profit. And this was, you know, um, 2010, 2011, uh, 2012, maybe. Um, I would think that, you know, something like 50,000 would work for almost every single, every single person. Uh, I think if you're at 50,000, you're going to be able to, to, to get by. And if you're a family and you've got two people that can make 30,000 or 40,000, you're up to 16, 80. You're good. You're good. How do you pay? Uh, how do you pay for insurance? So this is another question about being full time. How do you pay for health insurance? Cause a lot of you have jobs. How many of you have a job that pays your insurance through your job, either pays for all of it or most of it? Um, and, and it is a good insurance, not just some crap that they assigned you. This is a great question to follow up because we're just talking about the expenses every month of what it costs to live. And health insurance is a pretty important one. Um, so what is, 
the uh, what is the the answer? Does anybody know? Does anybody have health insurance through their company? And do any of you actually have your own insurance as resellers? And do you know how it works? Do you know how this goes over? Um, I get crap and they pay very little, Flip, Flip and Daddy. Most of it from Tommy. Tommy said that they're, they're doing most of it. I think most of you, my job pays an in insurance and it's pretty good, I think. Great medicine benefits. Vacation, retirement, most is paid. Uh, I still have a mortgage, which is the only debt that I have. Yeah, I'm about to have a big mortgage. Um, State healthcare, no shame. I have great insurance for my job. So most of you have great insurance. So let me give you guys an idea. And I don't want to know your incomes unless you feel comfortable sharing it. Does anybody know how much their job is taking out of their paycheck weekly or monthly towards their health insurance? How much are you actually paying towards that health insurance if your job doesn't pay it or they only pay half of it? Uh, some of you say it's completely covered. That's not always the case. It looks free, but it's not. You know, They take some stuff or they... They don't pay you as well as they should. Um, any of you that do pay health insurance from your job, how much do you think you pay or put towards it every month? And I'm going to shock you with what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to shock you with what I tell you. Uh, Tommy in Seattle has a really fantastic question that I want to cover for him in a second. But uh, just give me, give me a second to, to catch up. Um, it costs 800 a month and Tommy pays 45 a month. So $90, uh, Tommy Gaskin pays, uh, 140 a pay for just me flipping daddy. I paid 600 a month for the family dragons pick. Uh, we have Christian healthcare ministries. They cost 300 a month and out of pocket of only 300. Okay. So most of you, uh, Aloha Hawaii flower tried, um, most of you understand that, that health insurance, uh, if it's covered by your job or most of it, a couple hundred bucks, right? I have an entire plan that I pay for 100% out of my pocket. It's through Cigna. You can contact any of the big companies, Aetna, Aflac, Cigna, Humana, um, Blue Cross. You can contact all these companies for quotes if you want, um, online usually. But I pay for my health care that I've had for the better part of a, how long has Obama been out of office or when he got elected? So three going on four years plus his eight, so 11, 12. I think I got it the first year after Obama was um, was elected. So that would have been what, 08, 09? I think I moved, I had it in this house, so that was 13. And I had it in the apartment, so, and in the condo, so that was 2011, 2010. Um, probably around 09, I would say a year or two after Obama was elected. So 09 or 010. Whenever Obamacare officially got going and I didn't want the government health care, I bought my own. And, um, it has cost me, and it's gone up a little bit, but when I bought it, it was like $190 a month, and now it's $215, $214. I have a 90% coverage through health insurance. I have a max, uh, or I have a $1,000 deductible and a max out of pocket of two or $2,500 with like $20 prescriptions. I get one dental and one vision covered a year exams. I get 50% off my contacts. Many of you may not know I wear contacts. You probably do. 50% uh, off contacts and I get 50% off of uh, my dental cleanings uh, once a year. Uh, I have to pay for the second one. And then 50% um, off x-rays if I need it. And any kind of emergency dental surgery or emergency eye situations would be 50% covered. So all of that is part of my health insurance. 214 a month. Uh, my uh, fiance, Kate, because she's a woman, women always pay more because uh, y'all got a lot more going on with you in the health department. That's just a fact. And you had babies. Uh, she's 275 a month. And so a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's that's better than most employees will cover. That's very, very more than most um, employees will cover. So that gives you an idea. If you are, and you know, I'm not, you know, when I was 25, yeah, it was good. But um, when you get to be, you know, I had to renew and I was 34 years old, you know, now I'm 35. So I'll have to renew again at the end of the year. But uh, at 34 years old, they only bumped it up like four bucks. So even a 30 to 40 year old healthy person, you know, I don't have any underlying disease. Uh, I have no history of medical. Uh, I don't smoke. I don't take drugs. And I... I tell them that I drink. They always ask you that question. Like, do you have one to two drinks a week, two to five drinks a week, 
five to 10 drinks a week or 10 or more drinks a week. I always try to pick like in the middle because some weeks I'll go weeks and weeks without a drink. My mic is acting up again. Mm, Mike looks okay. Mike looks good. Okay, let me answer Tommy's question I've had up on the screen. If we have another shutdown and unemployment doesn't do another increase, are people going to be able to buy things if they don't have money for rent, food, et cetera? Okay, so uh, do, hello, Mother Deals, welcome in. What do you guys think? Let me let you guys answer the question. Tommy in Seattle has a question on the chat that's a very viable, reasonable question, and it's a good reason why you should think about full-time income on eBay as well. If we have another shutdown and unemployment doesn't do another increase, in other words, if unemployment doesn't extend, which the unemployment benefits end tomorrow, is tomorrow the last day for it or did they already end? Whatever, they either already ended last Friday or they end tomorrow, I can't remember. Uh, What do you think is going to happen if people don't have the money to buy other things uh, off of eBay and Amazon, like shopping from us, if they can't even afford their rent or food or other necessities? Obviously, people are going to pay for the roof over their head. They're going to pay for uh, the food that they eat. They're going to pay for everything that they need first. So what would I think about them having disposable income? We call it disposable income um, to spend on eBay, Amazon, Poshmark, Etsy, Shopify, whatever it might be. What do you guys think about that, that, you know, potential? I mean, what do we think about that potential of it happening? Does anybody else think that that is going to become a reality? I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. What I have to say about it is important, but what do you guys think? Or what do you think that that's, that's, that would happen if the shutdown happens? Um, Vicky says her sales have been good up 300% since the beginning of the health crisis. Uh, buyers need something to do. Dory's got a good point. Buyers are at home if there's a shutdown. They have more time on the internet People tend to spend money they might not necessarily have. We all know that's true, right? Uh, Most folks are irresponsible with money and finances. Uh, Star just chimed in. I assume it's Star over there at Flippin' Hippos. Um, Supposedly, unemployment will go down $400 from where it is. 25,000 stores predicting shutdown. Yes, that's correct. 25,000 retail stores are shutting this year. Um, That's all really, really true. It's all a fact. Uh, Thank you to Colorado Techs for the $4.99 Super Chat. Thank you. It's been a great month on eBay. Uh, July was pretty good for us. August, we'll have to see. July ended. Um, Flippin' Daddy, uh, broke people are not usually smart. They'll buy the $200 video game and worry about the electric later. So I do want to chime in that Florida actually extended its eviction and foreclosure moratorium today via our governor, Ron DeSantis, which means... Uh, it was supposed to be August 1st that landlords could go to evict you or foreclose on you through banks. That is not going to be allowed if you are behind on your mortgage or rent. They're extending it at least through September, probably October, because Florida is now in hurricane season. If you haven't heard, there is a tropical storm coming to Florida on Saturday, and I just had a new roof put on last Friday. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. Okay. Um People shop to make themselves feel good. That's true as well. Many people are afraid to leave the house, so they're still buying online. Great reason why you should sell necessities and and replenishables. Uh, It's possible. People will need to buy more necessities versus wants, of course. Try to aim for things that could be necessities. A great, great, amazingly great tip. Uh, If unemployment is $800 a month, that doesn't even cover rent for most. $200 a week. That's true. Food and entertainment before necessity, uh, necessary items when they are scared. Hopefully the storm won't damage your roof. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, also, my new house hasn't started construction yet. It's close. So hopefully they start construction and the hurricane doesn't blow it away. Um, so yeah, don't build your future. I, I hope this year has taught people that you can't even rely on full-time jobs. A lot of people that relied on their full-time jobs don't have those jobs anymore. They don't exist. They they lost those jobs. Those jobs closed. Something like 800 businesses in this county alone, in my county. uh, I live in Hillsborough County. I won't soon, but uh, Hillsborough County, which encompasses all of Tampa, I'm moving just outside the county lines. um, They closed for good. Businesses with 30, 40, 50, 100 employees. In fact, one of the biggest country nightclubs in the South 
Uh, it's called the Dallas Bull. It's a huge country nightclub. Two floors, 30,000 square feet, if I had to guess. Uh, all this stuff. Um, they, they're closing. They were on Facebook yesterday asking a GoFundMe to reopen. And they've probably got in the neighborhood of at least, they've got a, a, an army of bartenders. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars. They probably got 30 bartenders that work there. They've got DJs. They've got sound guys. They've got uh, doormen, three or four doormen. They've got 10 bouncers, 15 bouncers. They've got managers. They've got uh, you know, uh, performers, singers. That place employs 100 people that have worked there for as long as I know. Every time we go, they're the same people. Out of a job, gone. They've been closed. So uh, fines of yesterday, renters bought $100 of alcohol on December 31st, found a receipt they couldn't pay rent on January 1. Um, Dave wants to know how much I pay for my warehouse storage. Um, so I actually sub-rent a place uh, from Drive Time with Dave. You guys may be familiar with him. I uh, I rent his back warehouse building, and it costs me anywhere from a few hundred dollars a month to a few thousand. What's up, Alex? Fat Man Flipper, how you doing? Welcome in. Um, let me catch up with the chat. Even during the Great Depression, people made millions. So Liquidation King had a great point. The Great Depression was in the 1920s, uh, 1929 to be uh, precise, and it ran through the 30s is when it hit really bad, 31, 32, 33. And of course, the, um, the United States was bailed out by the war in Germany and the war in, in Europe and World War II. They were uh, fueled by us being able to build ammo and build bullets and build tanks. And so that really helped the recovery of this country after World War II. But during the Depression and the years leading up to the war, I believe Hitler took over in 33, which would have put us up to about 36 or 37 when we joined in World War II. Somebody check the uh, math on that number. I can't remember exactly what year we joined the war. It was the late 30s um because i know hitler took five or six years to take over the world or take over europe whatever he did um we dropped a bomb in 1942 so late 30s when we joined world war ii um those five to seven years people were sitting in soup lines and bread lines you know lining up for government um government funds and what really got people that was rich Richer during the Great Depression, you may not know this. Think about those old time, you know, Astorias, the guys after the Titanic, uh, the Guggenheim family, all those rich people. What did they do? They went to natural resources, steel, coal, iron. Those guys made a killing. Look it up. Why? Replenishable. It was replenishable goods. That's why they got rich. My nerd history is top notch. Darren, thank you for the $4.99 super chat. I'm stocking up on toilet paper this time around. Yes, we never ran out, but we came real close. We came within days, three or four days. Um, so Joe says, I don't see another shutdown no matter what. Enough damage has been done. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I, I, I don't know. Um, World War II, December 7, 1941 is when Japan attacked us. Yeah, 42 is, is when we dropped a bomb. So we must have joined war against Germany in the late 30s, something like that, 38, 39. Um, New Orleans restaurants are closing and Bourbon Street is a ghost town. All those people without jobs. Uh, bouncers, it's a weird, weird word to say. It's pretty funny though, right? Everyone is a consumer. Bomb drop, 1945. Wow, that was, really? I thought it was like 42 or 43. I'm losing it, guys. I'm losing it. Yeah, so the sex sells Layla's Adventures. Does sex sell still? Is it odd? I got a friend who sold shoes for way more because she has a foot picture. That's kind of been going on for a long time. Those of you that are women, so let me give you guys a clue here. And you don't say any reseller YouTube names. Feel free to say any non-resellers because I happen to be friends with a lot of resellers that are female. Um, the YouTubers that show off skin and show bodies, they get more views. They typically make more money. YouTubers that have males and females in the videos, they do well. It's just a fact. And it sounds really bad. And I'm not saying this towards any bad thing towards women. It's just kind of how the internet works. Look at social media. Look at all the Instagram girls. We call them. We have a very bad name for them around here, but we don't use that too often. But it's true. These girls just flaunting around sex sells. It absolutely is. And I'm not, I'm not encouraging any of you females to go do this, but it is one way to make money with your merchandise. It's true. Um, 
close enough. No, we we joined in. We joined in against Germany. Did we? I don't even remember. Why am I? I'm having like a. I'm having like a, a blank spot on when the bomb was dropped. Drop bomb dropped in forty five. I did not know that. Uh, Flippin' Daddy says he's gonna do fat guy shirtless videos from now on. I would not recommend that. I would not recommend that. What products are you selling and how are you sourcing? So I still sell a lot of clothing. I sell remotes. I sell small electronics. Um, small electronics always do good because people around the house. For example, I'll give you guys a good example. This remote control is actually what controls that drone that I was just showing you guys. It has a couple of flip out things. Um, and then you, you stick your phone in here. You stick your phone in here somehow. There you go. You stick your phone in the controller and you 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 fly the, the drone and you can see what the drone sees on your phone and then you just fly it. Anyways, this controller, if somebody broke it or lost it, uh, is probably north of $100 to replace because the entire drone was $600. So five and change. Um, anyways, uh, flipping daddy, yeah. There are things you can sell, plenty of things you can sell. <laughs> I was just reading some of the chat. It's mo most important, guys, that you just work for yourself. Stop working for other people. If you want to do it, you can do it. Push yourself. Make this full-time income. Please ask questions. Don't be scared to take the leap. You can buy your own insurance. You can buy your own uh, everything that you need. You can buy... Uh, enough expenses you can spend money on to get your taxes down. There are so many ways to be successful. Uh, add it up, figure out what you need to make and just make it happen. Uh, my sourcing, I have stuff shipping in. I'm buying out people's inventories that are going out of business. Another way to get your business going to work full time, start getting rid of that sourcing time. Buy inventory that you can have delivered and shipped in. You'll find them on social media. You'll find them through emails. You'll find them through Instagram and Facebook. You'll find them in the Facebook groups. Find them on Craigslist, find them on Facebook Marketplace, find them in your buy, sell, trade groups, call around the stores that are going out of business, 25,000 stores going out of business, plus the small and mom, uh, small mom and pop stores that are also going out of business. There are too many ways to get inventory. We just bought 50,000 plus pieces of clothing in a tractor trailer load 10 days ago. We've already almost, we'll have the money back next week, two weeks to get the money back, three weeks, weeks max. We are working on another order of 50,000 pieces of merchandise mix, not just clothes. The next one's going to be mixed. I'm having a problem of I don't even know where to store it all because the building I rent out of is probably between 2,700 and 3,000 square feet, and it's not big enough. We killed it. So now we're going to have to get storage units. You can buy storage units, but we don't want to pay for storage units, but we might have to. There's so much, so much to buy. Yeah, I mean, 25,000 stores are closing. Retail stores are closing this year, not including all of the small and mom and pop stores. That is just the retail shops, just the retail shops. Storage is becoming such an issue, such an issue. It's ridiculous. It's it's nonstop. So I want to thank Adam, who's been over there linking for you guys. If you do want to uh, shop at our Shopify store, it's linked below. You can buy inventory right off of it. We just added a bunch of new boxes. It's linked below, and Adam's putting it in the chat. Also, you can um, you know find people all over social media to buy from. Uh, it's it's not so bad. We also put out our sell through rate to help you locate what is the best selling items, not just the prices and what items, but how fast they sell. They're linked below. The top two links should be them. Um, one is just the sell through rate guide for $24.99. And one is the upgraded where you get some free stuff for $29.99 from Keith and Star and myself. Um, I bet you can get a steel building built on your property faster than a house. I bet I can too. Uh, am I affected by impatient buyers with the postal service slowing down delivery times of... Uh, uh, delivery times of the mail. Yes. Uh, Alan Wong. Good question. Uh, I actually have three items out for delivery right now coming to me that have not arrived. One is a little cable. Uh, I bought a cable for my microphone. Uh, looks sort of like this thing. Hang on. It looks like this thing right here. Um, I bought it 
it's a cable and adapter. It's been like five days. I'm still waiting for it. It says it's out. Uh, I bought some bubble mailers. They're still out for delivery. They've been out for delivery for like a week. And uh, I bought, I'll show you guys. I bought a new light kit. Um, I don't recommend you guys buy these because they're uh, pretty expensive. But I bought this light kit um, from a company called Elgato. It's called the um, Elgato Key Light Air. They're uh, dimmable, up and down, brightness, color, tint, everything on your computer. And they are, um, they're just like soft boxes, LEDs. They don't get hot and they're perfect for people to do YouTube, gaming. They're also good for photography. They're fantastic for photography because you can dim them down and up. They sit on a table. They're very lightweight. They're very easy to move around. They also have a set that will clamp to the desk if you prefer rather than the stand ones. Um, but they are very pricey. This set that I bought was $129 a piece. Have to buy two of them. It was two hundred and fifty nine dollars and eighty cents, or whatever it was. So uh, they are more pricey compared to the uh, the normal light boxes that I have that I use. But they're very cool, um, very cool addition to the stream. You can pick those up for sixty dollars. But the set that I just bought, pricey, but I think they're going to be worth it. So we'll see. Um, they are not linked below. Uh, shoot me a message, rockstarflipper at gmail.com, an email or a message on Facebook, and I'll link them to you. They sell out very, very quickly, but they are $260 for a set. Uh, that light kit is very, very expensive. How about the length of time for eBay shipping supplies? That is Randy. Yeah, my bubble mailers have been out for delivery for like five days. It was like three days before that. I think it's, I'm up to seven or eight days on those. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, those light kits uh, are... Um, are something that's put me off to buying stuff because I'm like, man, I can't even get a light kit or a, a, a simple cable that I paid six bucks for or my bubble mailers delivered. How am I supposed to do anything if I can't get any of this stuff done? Can I buy your car, Rockstar? Yes, please. Somebody buy the car. <laughs> Jesus. Um, do I think it's a good time to buy a 7,000 square foot warehouse? If it's a good deal, yeah. I mean, the problem is it's a seller's market right now. Prices are through the roof. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, versus renting a building, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, Adam, I ordered a tempered glass screen for my iPhone. I used best offer on eBay. I figured I get them as a seller. Why not? Saved a dollar fifty and thirty dollars less than buying from Apple. There you go. Uh, I am still a buyer. I buy stuff all the time from eBay shipping supply store. I buy stuff off of sellers on eBay. You guys know I just bought that DeLorean Back to the Future shirt off of an eBay seller. I bought several shirts off of Poshmark sellers over the last six to 12 months. I bought a necktie that I needed for New Year's Eve. I bought um, you know, tons of equipment. I bought the light kit, which I can link for you guys. I bought you know, this microphone came off of an eBay person. Um, I bought these little wireless off of eBay, or I might've bought those off Amazon. I bought this drone directly from the website. I did not buy this off an eBay seller, unfortunately. No one had it. Um, but it's possible. The USPS is very, very delayed. And I would highly recommend, uh, you know, being patient and just knowing that stuff um, is taking its time. I don't know why. Uh, can they grow Pacalolo? I don't know what that is. Do you need general liability insurance for just eBay? The answer to that is no. Amazon is requiring general liability insurance for anyone at 10000 a month or more. But they're soon going to drop that to 5,000 and I believe to every third party seller in 2021. I don't know when that's gonna start. It could be January, it could be December next year. There's no telling with Amazon, but eventually you will. eBay doesn't require it, maybe one day, but I doubt it. Uh, Amazon is going to require for everyone. How much is general liability insurance for sellers? That's a great question that I've covered, uh, but not very much. Um, the... General liability insurance that Kate, my fiance, covered for her photography business, which she has to have because let's say she does a wedding shoot at a waterfront uh, venue and somebody is standing up on the rocks or the waterfall and they fall and hit their head or they fall in and drown at her direction, she can be sued. So um, her insurance covers $1 million in liability and it also covers... Um, $50,000 for damage to property, hers or anyone else's. So if she's at a wedding venue and they knock over a glass vase, 
um, and it's a $500 vase, her insurance will cover that. If she drops her camera and it's three or 4,000 bucks to replace it, they'll cover that up to 50 grand. Uh, I think she needs more, honestly. But um, a million plus the 50,000 uh, property insurance is $44 a month. And it differs by where you live. Your state might be more than our state. Uh, Florida tends to be on the high side of insurance for almost everything. Our homeowner's insurance is high because we have hurricanes. Our car insurance is high because we have stupid drivers. Uh, our life insurance is high because Florida is full of more older people than um, younger people. And because we have more risk of death with all the water that we have. I know that sounds crazy, but there's water sports and other stuff. And I think our business insurance tends to be higher. Um, how am I addressing, uh, the Amazon shipper address visibility? There's nothing you can do. I use an address that is not where I live. That's the best that I do. Uh, what does general liability insurance cover on Amazon? So the million dollars would be, let's say you sold somebody a drone, a used drone, and they flew it around and they jabbed themselves in the eye, or maybe the charger that you sold them plugged in and melted it in the house and it burned up their drone or burned down their garage that would be something that a liability uh, plan would ha would happen uh, to cover you. Walmart recovers five or requires a $5 million plan. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I have not sold on Walmart's platform, although years ago, Drive Time with Dave was on Walmart's platform for a little while and I did help him sell with that, but I didn't know the prices on that one. Uh, liability, four to $500 uh, a year for 1 million Amazon. Yeah, Wayne, that's right about, uh, Kate's paying $44 a month. So she's paying 528 a year for general liability. <clears throat> hey, Jamie, what's up? Just saw you. Uh, laugh out loud. You think insurance here is high. Go check out New York. We're low. <laughs> I, yeah, I imagine um, that New York's probably got some high insurance. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of, that's general liability. So we covered Health insurance as a reseller full time. General liability if you decide to get it or need it. Um, you know we all know what the cost of expenses with with our inventory and our bubble wrap and our mailers and our uh, equipment and all kinds of stuff that we buy every year. We know what that costs. So um, there's definitely things to think about full time, and that's why we call it after expense pre tax profit. So it means how much money did you make after you spent everything you needed on fees and labels and any random equipment that you maybe buy throughout the year pre-tax. All income is pre-tax, whether you have a salary at work or you have your own business. Question. My insurance would be in play if the item I sold was brand new or is that on the manufacturer? Baron Von Deals. Uh, it could be either. So I'll give you a great example. Uh, we did a news story about a lady. She bought one of those retractable. Um, in fact, I have one laying right here. Don't run away, guys. Uh, she bought one of these retractable um, dog leashes. Don't get excited. My oh, poor Chewy just got excited because I picked it up. Uh, she bought one of these retractables, which is scary because I think I bought this offline too. Bought one of these, had her dog hooked up. It snapped. <laughs> it snapped and went and snapped back right into her eye. It took her eye out. It came from a third-party seller on Amazon, and she's suing for $25 million. Amazon. She tried to sue the seller who was not the manufacturer. The manufacturer is in China. And I think the seller might've been in China too, but she tried to sue them. She couldn't find them. They were up and gone. But anyways, it was a brand new leash. Snapped in, smacked her in the eye. And that was it. That was the end of it. Should someone stick with one line of business when building a brand? It depends on the business. If you're selling ice cream at an ice cream shop and then you decide to open a lingerie shop, probably best to separate them. So it really just depends. It's required, but is it recommended? It is not required for eBay. Is it recommended? No, I would bet less than 1% of all full-time eBay sellers, maybe less than 5% carry liability insurance selling on eBay. I would not, would not say that most people have. Why is eBay hitting me with a late shipment? Uh, if they do and you met your requirement, Henry, just hit them up and they will take care of it for you. Uh, I'll have to take them for a walk now. No. Ice cream and laundry shop sound fun. Yeah. 
No, but that that is the liability. Also, you guys may have heard about the very sad story. I think it came out of Jersey, where the lady bought those teething necklaces. You put them around a um, a baby's neck, and they're like little things, and the baby, I guess, can pull it up and teeth on it. Um, they uh, they bought one that actually it got the baby was teething and it got twisted, and then it came down twisted and it suffocated the child, a, a baby. Uh, I don't know how old. Um, and that product came off of Etsy. The lady's suing Etsy, not, I think she's after the manufacturer too, but she's suing Etsy for $50 million. And there's actually a lawsuit going on and correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody knows this. I think it's out of Pennsylvania where the lady got hit in the eye with the retractable dog leash. They are setting precedents. They're going to eventually end up in the Supreme court. If I had to guess about that exact issue, which is liability on sellers, third party sellers through a third party platform for the products they sell if they are not the manufacturer. Let's say this manufacturer sells me a thousand dog leashes and I get them all for a dollar and then I put them all out and I sell them and then somebody gets hit in the eye. Am I responsible or is the guy that made these cheap dog leashes, these crappy dog leashes, I hope this isn't one of them, is he responsible or are we both responsible or is Amazon responsible for letting us sell it? Um, that's the question. If it's FBA, then Amazon carries the burden. Not necessarily because the manufacturer made a terrible product. Should I chase a patent of an item that seems the patent time is now over? It can cost upwards of 40 grand, but I feel like the product I could have. Chris, without knowing the product, I couldn't advise you on that at all. I don't want to know your product or steal it, but I, I patents are very expensive. And you, you just said it, 40 grand, my friend. Uh, what idiot puts a string of beads around a teething baby's necklace? Um... Pam, I guess it was a really popular um, teething necklace. I can show you guys. Um, I can show you what it looked like. Um, I guess at the time it was super a super popular necklace. They actually have a picture of it. Um, here, I'll share it with you guys. Just give me a second here. Uno momento. Okay, so that is actually the teething necklace that um, that was uh, that was used that ended up in the lawsuit. And then if you go over here and you do uh, dog leash lawsuit Amazon something like that, um, yeah, they don't really have a good picture of it. Anyways, it was one of the retractable leashes. Somewhere over here. They don't actually have a picture of her. I think she stayed anonymous. I can't remember. Anyways, that was it. Uh, why would you give that to a kid? That's ridiculous. Yeah, a good liability should fall on the manufacturer and customer. Manufacturer should be responsible if the seller or platform is knowingly selling. So this wasn't a recalled item. Um, wasn't that... The baby in daycare and the baby fell asleep. I think the baby was at home. I can't recall. Figgy, I'll have to look that up. Um, it may have been handmade. It may have been handmade and she was the man manufacturer. I can't remember on that one. I will have to look that up. But either way, uh, the lady that's child died is suing not only the people that made it, whoever it was, the seller, manufacturer, whatever, and Etsy as a platform. So that's what they're going to court over. Is the manufacturer liable? Yeah, I would think they're the most liable. As a manufacturer, if you make a crappy necklace for a baby or a crappy dog leash or a crappy anything, um, you're definitely responsible. You, you have a lot of responsibility. But is Etsy to blame for allowing one customer to sell a product that has not been recalled to another customer that could be unsafe? There's no one that's going to be able to vet and look through every single product. Definitely, um, something that you, you know, you have to, a court's going to have to hear. Uh, and those lawsuits, you include everyone and hope it sticks to one of them, the niche lady. And that's how it works, ladies and gentlemen, in lawsuits, whoever is damaged, whoever lost their eye or lost their child is going to sue every single person they can possibly think of the manufacturer, the seller, the platform, uh, the delivery company that delivered it to her, the bank that allowed the transfer of money. They're going to name everyone and hope that something sticks. Um, in that fire in Rhode Island in a nightclub that killed 100 people, Great White, called The Station, the families of the victims sued the nightclub 
the owners, the managers, they sued the band that was playing and used the pyrotechnics that started the fire. They sued the pyrotechnics company. They sued the speaker company that had speakers in the club because those speakers had unsafe, non-fireproof foam around them that helped fuel the fire even more. They, as far as I understand, they sued the company that made the wood that built the club. I can't blame you when you lose a family member. I get it. But with that said, that gives you an idea. So liability insurance is not a bad bad option for 40 bucks a month. Okay. Um, where's Ralph Nader? We did this on real estate transactions. The seller, the agency broker. Those beads were always too small for teething. Balloons and sparklers were probably for little kids too. How many kids died from those? Uh, you're right, Pam. It, some of this stuff is just, it is what it is. But all right. So that covers all of that. I'm going to get ready to head out of here. If you guys need anything, my email is open to all of you. Rockstarflipper at gmail.com. Please consider visiting our wholesale site. A ton of good inventory down there. Scroll through it. If you don't find anything you like, bookmark it and stop by again once a day. We put up new lots every Monday through Friday. Um, Also, the two options below, our sell-through rate guide, they're going to show you how to see how fast every item sells. Uh, It doesn't just show you what items you should sell and what prices. It tells you how fast, how many of every item have sold every week, every month, every uh, 90 days, three months. It really shows you what is the fast selling items and what is not. Uh, If your store is full of great items at great profits, but they take months and months to sell, you'll never make money. And that's not going to help us achieve our goal of full-time selling. Uh, eBay, Amazon, whatever platform it is, you need fast selling items. So appreciate it. Uh, Cocktail time. I'm going to have one drink myself. Uh, Get back to work. I appreciate all of you being here. Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you later tomorrow, uh, last day of July. And uh, enjoy it. And let's get ready for August. Go make money, guys. Get this to full-time. Push yourself. Work hard. And I'll see you guys next week for the live show and all the rest of this weekend. Good night, everyone. Hit that like button before you leave. I do do appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, subscribe. That means a lot to me. But that blue thumbs up is an awesome gesture. I appreciate that just as much. See you guys.